What's up guys, it's Gemini, and I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek on an upcoming project I have with the Hierophant. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of burning damage and proliferation, so this is an idea that brings an old skill that we used to use in a certain way back to life. And that skill happens to be Discharge. This is not a cast on crit build. This is a self-cast, multi-charge, avatar fire discharger. Admittedly, I have some tweaking to do, but conceptually, I think I have it down. Let's talk about this ascendancy, the Hierophant, and how it brings this old build back to life. Ever since the Ellie proliferation nerf, and the nerf to AoE, this build really struggled getting a single target strategy. Now with the Hierophant, we can summon two additional totems, which is a total of three, without even having to spec into Ancestral Bond. Now what would happen if we picked up Ancestral Bond, we can't deal damage ourselves, so if we did discharge it would do zero damage. The main motivation for me exploring this build was to use Illuminated Devotion, which I think is a very interesting notable that the Hierophant has to offer. Skills in your helmet penetrate 20% elemental resistances. So my strategy was to put Flame Totem in a 4 link with an extra 20% Ellie Pen. On top of that I have Fire Pen. Elemental Focus, which is a 49% more multiplier. And we have Control Destruction, which is a 44% more multiplier. So now I can summon three of these Elemental Totems to do my single target bidding. One of the old ways to dish single target damage with the old Burning Discharger was to use a skill like Flame Blast, Conk Effect, but that would take some investment into cast speed and other things to make it good. I didn't really want to invest into cast speed, I just wanted to discharge over and over again. And at the same time I didn't want to struggle against tanky bosses that didn't have any adds. So this was my solution. So now that we have the single target covered with flame totems, and the AoE covered with discharge, what do we do with the rest of Illuminated Devotion? It says skills in your gloves have 20% increased area of effect. What I have done is I have used Orb of Storms with increased area of effect and power charge on crit. And as you can see, the Orb of Storms is massive. This will take many, many times in a large area and feed me power charges. So it's an alternative way to generate extra charges for when you want a massive discharge. As for the skills from your boots leech 2% of damage as life. I decided to put a Molten Shell since I am a fiery build. Vol Molten Shell is linked with increased duration, fire penetration, and increased area of effect. Now that the game has introduced the support gem Blasphemy which turns your curses into auras, it's a big quality of life improvement for my self cast discharger. Assassin's Mark seems to be a great choice for this build because it gives me a 40% chance to grant a power charge when an enemy is slain. In addition, it gives me a 9% additional crit chance. It also increases the damage of my critical strikes. And lastly, it gives me 25 life and mana per enemy killed. Warlord's Mark is the second curse that was chosen because it gives me endurance charges when an enemy is slain and that's preferred. In addition to getting a 39% chance to grant an endurance charge when an enemy is slain, we also have 2% life leech and mana leech when an enemy is hit. And lastly we have some stun benefits with chance to be stunned and reduced stun recovery. So we've taken out the tediousness of having to self cast curses before you discharge. And we've tackled the single target problem by putting flame totem strategically in the helmet so that we could fully utilize the elemental penetration from illuminated devotion. So we can get endurance charges from warlord's mark and by self-casting Enduring Cry, we can get power charges through Orba Storms and Assassin's Mark. But what about Frenzy Charges? How are you going to get those? Well, Blood Dance Boost gives you a 25% chance to gain a Frenzy Charge on kill, and we have a maximum of three of them. It also gives me some other benefits like additional regen per Frenzy Charge and attack and cast speed and movement speed. The Dex is also nice because it's an offstaff for the Templar and it allows me to wear carcass jack and other things. So now that we've covered charge generation, how does this actually work with avatar fire? So power charges discharge lightning damage, frenzy charges discharge cold damage, but since I have avatar fire it converts half of it into fire, and as a downside I can deal no non-fire damage. So that means 50% of the damage is lost because of avatar fire, but it all goes to fire. 
and this is important because I don't want things to shatter. If things shatter, then it doesn't leave a proliferation ring behind. However, being able to proliferate shock would be awesome, but I can't do that with Avatar of Fire. And people will say, well, you're just going to die to reflect as a self-cast discharger. Well, everything is being checked by my fire resistance, which is at 84% because of Rise of the Phoenix. That gives you plus 8. And then Barbarism, which gives you plus 1. So this build is already reflect proof. So the reflection problem is solved. I would still like to increase the stability and the reliability of discharging and gaining charges. I've put an intuitive leap jewel between the witch and shadow in efforts to pick up these new nodes behind conduit. Charge on kill. This will give me a total of 12% chance to gain a power, frenzy, or endurance charge on kill. This intuitive leap jewel allowed me to save 1, 2, 3 points. In addition to the charge generation nodes, I'm able to pick up Dreamer, which is an amazing 1 point mana node. I'm able to get the additional curse through Whispers of Doom, and in the near future I would like to try a couple different setups that don't include Avatar Fire, possibly going Elemental Overload and using Self-Cast Discharge without Prolif, and using the Sybil's Lament Ring to deal with Reflection Damage. This is something that I'll have to test over time, and I'll keep you guys posted. I think this is a great start for a proof of concept, and this is what I like to do with my standard characters in addition to improving old characters with new updates. Some frequently asked questions about this character from the few times I have showed it on stream is why didn't you pick up Conviction of Power? It seems pretty powerful for self-cast discharge as it helps facilitate charge generation. Yes, I feel like that is definitely the case, but I feel like you need to cover your weaknesses which is single target, not make your AoE that's strong and powerful more powerful. Illuminated Devotion gives you a very powerful flame totem. In addition, it gives you more enhancements for your tools. Another question you might have is, is Vol's Devotion a gate amulet good for this build? Absolutely, but it's fucking expensive, and it's not required. You can totally run this build without it. Putting this amulet on pretty much maxes out your charges all the time. Without it, you're at near max to max. So it's not that big of a deal, it just increases the reliability. I think there's a lot of hidden power within the Hierophant. And when I look at it, I think of what are some great AoE skills that could use a Tri-Totem as a single target. And I actually have more plans to make a Wukong type character with the Hierophant using Ancestral Protector as my single target, giving me a mechanical advantage and increasing my damage. Now imagine using my staff with Conviction of Power you now have a more automated way to generate both power and endurance charges. In addition, you could drop three more totems and still sweep. So now you have four entities dealing significant damage. I think it could be really cool and it would also give you a mechanical advantage. You can clear 90% of the content with just the leap sweep. It's not that often you need the extra help for single target damage. Now if you go the Ritual of Awakening route with Conviction of Power, I feel like this is a two-hander build so that you could have a six link in your chest and a six link on your weapon. If you go Ritual of Awakening and an Illuminated Devotion, then you can settle with a very potent flame totem. If you enjoyed this build, you may enjoy my upcoming series showcasing all my old characters ascended. I've taken a lot of time and updated their trees and given them proper ascendancies. Thank you guys for your continued support. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Hegemony, and I'll see you guys later.